We did it. We're officially recording. Um, and to give some historical context, this is the third ever Knowledge Drop panel we've ever done for the Remote Your Nation. We did one in the early days on Bitcoin. Remember when Bitcoin was a thing, y'all? Um, when I was like blown up and there's a bunch of people into it, we did a panel with like a bunch of experts from the nation on uh, blockchain and all that stuff. And then we did another one on self-love last Valentine's Day, which is kind of great too. People that are into that spoke their wisdom to that subject. But this one, which I know a lot of people in the nation have, um, you know, some, some ideas about because they've, they've been through it as well um, on working the night shift feels long overdue. So thank you to the five of you for raising your hand to drop some knowledge on this topic um and thanks to the, everybody else that joined also just say off the bat i think most of y'all are probably you know not at your first knowledge drop so hopefully you know how this stuff works but there is a chat box make sure it's set to all panelists and attendees if you want to have everybody see the things you're dropping in that comment box and also on the zoom webinar version there's a question and answer box so we're going to just have this be kind of an open hopefully lively interesting insightful conversation based on the questions you guys are asking us so i have a couple like topics and questions in mind already that i think would be great to to cover on this subject but if you guys have any actual questions about what it is to work night shift how it went for these wonderful humans um things you're concerned about you know, so, things you learned yourself or anything like that, start to fill the question and answer box and try to get to as many of those as possible. Cool, thanks. Um, I'm Travis. I hopefully know all y'all on the call or anybody watching. Um, and I'm currently working the night shift out here in Bali at a citizen's house in um, Asia myself. It's 12.08 a.m. for me currently. Um, and I'll just be playing host for the most of this. And I'd love to just kick it off by having us go around the circle. Everybody kind of just give a little intro of who you are, maybe, you know, your name, where you, you know, from originally, what you consider home to be, what you do for work, and maybe where you are in the world. Um, and then we'll get into sort of like night shift experience. And then actually, you know, why don't you just go for that too? And then cover like your experience working night shift thus far in your digital nomad life. So name, where you're from, who you are, what you do for work, and how the night shift has come into play with that. Why don't we start with you, Pino, aka Tax on Slack. And uh, when you're finished, just pick somebody else and just keep it going like that so there's not as many awkward pauses. Sounds good to me. The awkward pause is always a thing. So, um, uh, As Trevor said, my name is Pino. Um, most of you, if you see me in Slack, I'm at tax, so I'm the tax girl. Um, I, that's what I do. I now run and own um, Nomad Tax, which we do tax and business consulting for digital nomads like us. Um, but when I was actually on remote year, I worked for a company. Um, so I worked for a firm. It was a completely remote firm, um, but I was the only international um, person and I handled all of the onboarding um, for our new clients and we had worldwide clients. Um, you know, so I was handling multiple time zones for all of my coworkers within the United States and also international time zones from clients in the UK, from Australia. Um, you know, I, it was kind of crazy because I like I, you know, I would have calls sometimes in the same night at like 4 p.m. and then 6 a.m. and I'd have calls all in between. So um, the night shift was really fun for me. Uh, right now, life is a little bit easier. I'm home based here in Birmingham, Alabama, which is where I am now recovering from shoulder surgery. Uh, you know, but soon I'll be off to Cape Town. So working that midnight shift again. Um, so. Anyways, uh, that's kind of my experience. Looking forward to kind of dropping, you know, how I survived it all with you guys, you know, telling you about some of the fun stories that we came along the way. So looking forward to this. And I will pass the mic to Blair because I have OCD and he's next on my screen. Yay. Hey, folks. Um, thank you. Um, so I'm Blair. Um, I, I uh, traveled with Exupri, which finished up end of August, and I've been traveling since then currently in Hanoi uh, with Amani and loving it. Um, it's my second time in Hanoi now. Um, I work as an education consultant as a, and as a curriculum writer. Um, so I work with schools in the US, um, which leads to plenty of interesting um, things working the night shift. Um, but honestly, I love the night shift. Um, that's like I chose to spend another four months in Asia because it fits like, who I am as a person, I love being able to go explore during the day um, and then work in the evening. Um, and I'm really excited to learn from other folks on this panel, uh, on this panel, because um, I'm sure you guys have some really good tips. Um, and I'm excited to share some of my own tips as well. Oh, shoot, I'm gonna pass it to Nicole. 
Hi, uh, I'm Nicole. I'm traveling with Polaris. Um, so I just finished 19 weeks in Asia, working the night shift, and um, it was very interesting. Um, I think the best part about it was we had like a lot of people in our group who were also working the night shift. So we had a lot of hilarious times uh, being delirious together and uh, having weird karaoke um, events that I initiated during the office hours. Um, it was kind of strange. Uh, I work with the New York office, so um, I work full East Coast hours, and um, that was kind of difficult, especially on Fridays, <laughs> because um, everyone was partying. But um, I don't know, it was an interesting experience. It kind of like feels like it was like a war going through it. Um, at points, sometimes it was fun. It was kind of like highs and lows, like extreme highs and lows. Um, but yeah, it's fun to talk about now. It's like war strife. Um, so I'll pass it to Simone. Cool, thank you. Um, I'm Simone. I am from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I work as a client experience manager. Um, so I have a team in India that I manage. Um, and I also have a team in Detroit, Michigan that I manage. Um, so I'm kind of split between two really weird time zones right now. Um, I do cover clients in all US um, time zones as well. So I have from East Coast all the way to luckily not Hawaii or Alaska yet, but to West Coast. Um, and uh, right now I am in Lima, Peru. I did not favor the night shift. Um, it was a little rough, but um, I did find some really good strategies to really power through uh, those late nights and then also really experience the countries that I was into the fullest during the early mornings that I got to see things before all the tourists came. So um, I'll pass it to Kim. How do I do that? Oh, I just shut up. It? Sorry, go ahead, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> I love you, Sim. Um, I'm actually traveling with Perea, so is Sim. My name is Kim. We are a duo, I tell you. Um, I own a business intelligence and analysis company. Um, I decided to rage quit my nine to five while on remote year month two. Would not recommend, but it's worked out now. Um, so essentially while in Asia, I was doing all my own biz dev, development, um, pretty much anything you can think of. Um, I'm still a DBA for a couple companies, so getting you know crazy hour service calls that were crazy before, but even weirder in Asia. Uh, so my typical hours were, you know, whenever I had to work, um, there really was no scheduling. Um, so I have some recommendations for you guys on how to avoid that lifestyle. Man, we have a wonderful panel here. What a gamut of um, <laughs> jobs and industries and experiences. Um, but that, you know, one thing that we're here to chat about all in common of those, those war stories, as you put it, Nicole, I think that's hilarious. Um, and I remember as a PO actually going to like visit all of my Cousteaux that would be up at night and Asia still working together. Um, to like, you know, bring them something to like, be like, good job, you're still doing it. And they would just be in such a funny, like community, like headspace where they were just like, yes, it's the 10 of us. That's the only thing that matters. Um, so yeah, it can be joyful in those ways. And actually speaking of, that's like kind of the first question I'd love to have everybody just go around and chime in on real quick. It's like, what did you find yourself struggling with most? I guess like sleep is an obvious answer, but feel free to go with that if that is the genuine answer in your heart. It's like, what did you struggle with most when it comes to night shift? And then... Um, what did you enjoy about it most as well? So maybe just quickly chiming in on both of those things and let's just go around the circle again. I'll start with you, Tex. I should have called you by yeah. your Slack name, by the way. That's weird. I know you as a human being. It's <laughs> totally <laughs> fine. It's totally fine. It's like, I have so many different names. It's like, is it Tax? Is it Pino? Is it Crystal? Like nobody knows. It's part of my mystery. Um, I think the thing that I struggled with the most with the night shift was kind of the disconnect that I had from the group that didn't have to work on the night shift. Um, we got to Asia, it was month four for us, um, you know, and, and, and I don't know, you know, if, if any of you have been in the group that experienced a dip, right? And month four is kind of like primetime dip time, um, you know, so for us moving into a little bit of a dip and then having this segregation between, you know, just the few of us, I mean, there were probably about eight of us that were like solid night shifters um, and the rest of the group, that was the hardest part for me was just kind of having that disconnect. Um, you know, so kind of way to get through that is, I mean, obviously any of us that have worked the night shift know that those who do work the night shift, you form this bond that just, it's pretty unbreakable. Um, you know, but 
you know, so getting through it, you know, having that bond with those people and then, you know, really kind of making an effort to, you know, get up during the day and spend some time with the other people in the group, even if I was just deadbeat tired. Um, you know, I think that that was, that was, that was the way that we really got through it. Yeah. Sucky hours. We went with that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go in just the same order for this question. So Blair, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I think the main issue I had was when my sleep cycle wasn't consistent. So overall, I've had really good luck, but like specifically um, some parts of Malaysia, like I just got out of sync and that was really, really difficult. Um, so prioritizing, like getting back in sync, taking sleeping pills, wearing my like really diva-esque face mask to bed so that like the sun doesn't wake me up. Like little, like s things that like people laugh at, but like, and I, I also laugh at and record Snapchats of myself, but um, like it would that like just ruined me as a person and made me really grumpy and like not my the best version of myself. Um, so that was the hardest part. I think the like biggest highlight was finding new routines and like traditions that you would never do in real life, um, but you do in real life because you're on remote, you're on doing the night shift. So like my biggest um, like memory would be in like Kyoto. I had a bicycle, I lived in the big house. I'm like biking home in like fall slash winter in Kyoto at like 2.30 or three in the morning. It just was like majestic and beautiful and like a side of Kyoto that like 99% of tourists ne would never see unless they're like drunk off their ass, like myself included. Um, so it was really, really just like special like moments like that where it was like, oh, this is like my life for the month. Um, and uh, Nicole on you now um yeah i was just saying in the chat like the sunrise rides home to the big house in kyoto were just like what is my life like what am i doing but uh they're kind of like epic i think the biggest struggle would be like if you ever take a nap on like a weekend and then you wake up and you're kind of like out of it like sometimes you'd wake up from like sleep like your whole sleep and it would be like so foggy and just feel like you took a weird nap or like you were drunk and it was like I feel horrible. I have to go to work and deal with this bullshit now? Like, ah, how am I going to do this? So the biggest struggles would be um, like that feeling. And I feel like the sleep deprivation and the kind of the upside down led to like crazy highs and lows in moods. So like, you'd be like that. You'd be like in a terrible mood and like crying. I cried a couple times, a couple hundred times. Um, <laughs> but then you'd also get like hilariously laughing and giddy and have like a great time so it was just like a lot of like instability like you were saying when your sleep got out of whack like it's just like a roller coaster um but like I said before what I enjoyed most was like the camaraderie and then it was like 2 a.m and we could go, go to the peep show ramen in Kyoto and like have ramen and beer and like laugh our asses off what Oh, if you guys haven't been to Kyoto, Ichiran is the best place to go for middle of the night ramen because um, they open a little uh, curtain and then they serve you ramen and then they bow and then you're in like this little library vestibule and then you just eat your ramen and it's like the best place. Um, Kyoto is definitely the best place for late night eats. Uh, as far as Malaysia and Thailand, uh, I'd recommend um, like food shopping and like being prepared with food. Cause a lot of times on night shift, we'd be starving and like roam around Hanoi and like just see rats and no restaurants. So really kind of like plan your meals um, and like what you want to eat. And also like the days that I felt the best were when I like would um, like eat something healthy and not like chicken fingers at fufu, um, and wine, even though that was fun too. <laughs> um, Cool. Um, so I would also second that food was a really big struggle for um, us. I'm actually on the program with um, my partner, Tim, um, and he eats constantly. So that was a really big issue that we ran into in the first couple of days um, where we realized that we need to actually stock up on a lot more food than we had planned. Um, and we were also trying to stick to vegetarianism um, that kind of fell off halfway through. But um, 
that was also really difficult. So just picking up what we needed beforehand and then like you had a craving in the middle of the night, you couldn't satisfy it. Um, I actually lost 10 pounds in Japan um, from like my sleep schedule being so messed up. I know everybody's like, oh, that's not a problem to have, but um, it actually was really great. But then when you gain it back, that is a problem. So um, that was one thing that we ran into and also uh, weekends. Um, so you're working nights during the week and then all of a sudden the weekend comes and you want to go explore. Um, so you go explore during the day and then you're really thrown off that night where you're like wide awake again, but you also really need to sleep. Um, so that was the biggest thing for us. Um, but we, we tried to stick to that as much as possible um, during weekends just so we wouldn't have that horrible Monday. Um, Cause we did the schedule where we worked, we stayed up a little while and then we sleeped and that worked out really well for us um, but again I think weekends was the biggest struggle for us um, getting keeping our routine Kim? Uh, probably the hardest for me was figuring out what worked country to country uh, they're also different you get to something like Hanoi where it's essentially a 24-hour city uh, if you want to have a beer at 6 a.m. go to Cuckoo again chicken fingers, but still, you know, it's something. Um, versus something like once you're in Thailand, a bit more regulated, uh, can be harder to sort of figure things out. So essentially month to month, I was adjusting the way I was working based on the environment. So the most difficult part was definitely that first week figuring out what the amenities were, sort of what's open, what's not, what's available, and then how to live there. Um, as far as the best goes though, cuckoo. I mean, like you can get a beer at 6 a.m. and no one frowns upon you. Kyoto, you can pick up sake from like the 7-Eleven, no big deal. So really whatever hours you work, you can find a way to get by. It's just a certain amount of adjustment and planning to get there. Becca just asked in the chat and like some of you guys touched on it, but any other thoughts about like the weekends? Like did you guys try to readjust fully to everybody else in your communities and the normal like world schedule? Or did you just be like, let's keep it going, sleep whenever you, you know? Yeah, I can, I'll jump in on this one. So um, for weekends, for me, I, we were obviously out adventuring a lot, um, but we were really conscious of if we needed to sleep, we would sleep. That was huge. So um, that also meant, you know, if we were out and about, we hightailed it back home and just slept. Um, night masks are great. Um, I didn't use, I don't like earplugs, but um, earplugs or um, I found my favorite app, which is called Rainy Mood. Um, it has like, uh, night or I'm sorry, um, stormy sounds that you can turn on. I would just sleep with my earplugs in that helped so much. Um, but yeah, weekends, it was really just kind of play it by ear. If you're tired, go sleep. If you're hungry, go eat. Um, but Mondays were almost always kind of a struggle because you did want to go and explore parts of the city. Um, we road trip a lot. We, we take a lot of side trips. Um, so, you know, that also throws it off. So I would say that if you can just power through and see what you can and then come back and sleep. But um, we did flip our schedules a lot on weekends um, just so we weren't missing out. But um, but we also did keep weekends to like, you know, just sleeping when we can. Sorry, that's not a great answer, but yeah, just kind of play it out. Test out the few couple, the first few weeks of like, hey, yeah, this works for me. This doesn't. And just be honest with yourself. If you can't do it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, a lot of the weekend. Sorry. Go, Nicole. Go. Oh, um, so some weekend plans um, would be like working late into Saturday morning, but then not sleeping late, like maybe waking up at noon to like do stuff, yeah, and then no, you'd be so dead long. Saturday night, fall asleep Saturday night, and fall asleep Sunday mm -hmm. night, and maybe wake up at the crack of dawn Monday morning to do the cool like Fushimi gates or anything like that, and then like try to catch a nap before work Monday. That was a schedule that worked kind of well. Um, it was impossible to get into the full night shift because there's nothing re really to do on weekends overnight except to get blackout drunk, which isn't always the way to go. <laughs> Not the healthiest choice every time, but... Um... <laughs> And also, yeah, like that point you were just making like the Sunday night into Monday day, it just feels like your weekend can be so long at that point. So you don't have to start work again until like the middle of the night Monday. So that's kind of a nice thing, I guess, is like, because yeah, that's like the payoff of having to work Friday night late if other people are out. Um, you get that Sunday night, like all the way through till Monday to go, just in the crazy morning or whatever, like you're saying, it's great. And But there was also the a lot of like YOLO too. Like if you're tired on the weekends, it's like, whatever, I'm tired, I'll just like, 
make the best of it because it's all fun anyway. So it's just like you just have to kind of accept that you're going to feel cracked out sometimes, but make the most of it. Didn't you feel like you got sick more during working the night shift? Because I know for myself, like even just in my older age, like I'm 36 now, as of like a few days ago. Anyway, now I notice like if I don't get the right. Did you just call me old? Uh, older i'm calling myself older i don't know um but like i'll know like if i don't get enough sleep for a few nights in a row i just like feels like it coming out like i'm back. so did you guys notice that what the night shift like did, did your health hold up yeah for sure i mean that was that was a struggle that i definitely had i was definitely i can tell you where all of the medical centers are in all of the asian countries because i went to all of them uh, the one in thailand is really good by the way the one in japan are kind of creepy um but yeah i mean like we, because like sleep is such an important part of self-care and health. And because, I mean, it's basically like Nicole said, I mean, the, the thing about it, like the best schedule was no schedule. Like you slept when you could, where you could, how you could. A lot of the times, most of my sleep I got on buses on the way to like tracks and stuff like that, uh, local experiences. Um, but I mean, it's just, you know, between that and the diet thing that people have mentioned, I mean, trying to find good food in the middle of the night, you know, and just adopting the fact that your routine is that there is no routine. Um, you know, I, I did find myself very run down health wise, um, you know, while I was working. So, I mean, you do the best you can, but I mean, it's, you know, Nicole said it, it's, you're there, you make the most of it. So, and sometimes, you know, being run down is just part of it. I would say though, if I had to be sick somewhere in the world, I'd probably choose Vietnam because there's like smoothies and coffee that makes you feel like you can see the future. So there we go. Um, yeah, if you're tired and you're in Vietnam, just go get you a co an egg coffee <laughs> yeah. from Jofa, and I mean, you're done. You're good. Keep going. You're, good. you're already in next week while everybody's behind you, you know? It's great. Um, all right, I want to switch topic a little bit, um, but definitely, yeah, be mindful of just keeping yourself healthy, I guess, if you're, if you're about to take on the night shift. And kind of something that you brought up, Simone, um, like with the apps, I was going to ask you guys all to maybe chime in on any sort of like tools or it can also be like physical things like you mentioned your face mask flare to help you sleep um so any sort of like yeah virtual or physical or any like tools or resources that you feel like really helped you get through the night shift i'd love to just have anybody like chime in with their favorite couple things yeah um noise <laughs> oh sorry go ahead oh sorry my number one sorry kim my number one um tool would be um boomerang for gmail which also can be used for um outlook or like Microsoft, whatever. Um, but it lets you pause your inbox. So when I go to bed at night, I, or at morning, whenever you, when, when I go to bed, I hit pause inbox. And that means that I will not get any push notifications on my computer or my phone until I tell it to reactivate, which I usually do like around the time that I plan to wake up. Um, because I, I'm very like panicky about like, what if something important happens, which like, the world's probably not going to end via an email, generally speaking. So that was, that's been like life changing. Cause it just like allows me to sleep and not worry about work. Um, so I think that would be my number one. Rec. So, yeah, I would say, um, noise canceling headphones. Um, I was in the 10 person house. Well, I think it's 11 for us or oh, whatever big house in Kyoto. Um, so basically we had half the house working the night shift, half working a day shift. And then the cicadas working the morning shift, like bang on 6 a.m. Like you could basically not sleep, just having so much existing around you. Um, so if you don't have those earplugs, like anything just to be able to kind of dull out that noise. Um, even traffic noise in some places was kind of a lot. Like Hanoi's a big city, you're gonna hear it. So yeah, if you haven't invested yet, definitely get some of those. Um, another thing that I found, so one of my biggest tips for anybody working the night shift, keep your computer in your hours that you're working. So my computer in Asia was actually in East Coast time. That helped me incredibly plan meetings, um, just kind of keep that mentality of switching instead of like, oh, I'm working the night shift. This is my new day. Like this is how, this is how I'm living. So it keeps you in that, like the psychological state of um, living in the now. But what else I really... The other thing I really liked is um, if you have an iPhone, if you go to your, sorry, I'm trying to get there. If you go to your alarm or your clock app and you go to the world clock, you can actually have all different um, time zones instead of having to download and pay for an app. Um, I keep all of my hours. I keep my India team hours and then our next city's hours or whatever. 
Um, and that's also just a quick way to kind of check it. Um, but again, the Rainy Mood is one of my favorite apps for sleeping as well. So. I'm currently paying for Rainy Mood on my phone right now. I'm getting the pro version, like the 299. Oh, of course, of course. Um, I think so my best time management app, I love world clock. Um, you know, that was a good one for me too on my phone. And then I also have another, it's a Google Chrome extension that I use called FIO. Um, it's a plugin. So as soon as I open up my browser, there's a tab that has people's different time zones and, uh, the, then you can plug in like where your team members are, where your clients are. And the fun thing about it too, is it's color coded. So if it's like daytime, it's like orange. And if it's nighttime, it's like purple. So that's kind of cool too. Um, and then um, just for, for sleeping, I used an app called Sleep Cycle, which I really love because um, it would set, you know, it would kind of sense when you went to sleep and you would tell it how long you wanted to sleep, right? So it wasn't like, okay, uh, you know, it's six o'clock in the morning. I want to wake up at noon, but because I need to get six hours of sleep. Well, what if you don't fall asleep until eight o'clock? Um, you know, so that was kind of my, I was like, okay, I need at least five hours of sleep to function. So it kind of sensed when I felt asleep and it would wake me up about five hours later, but like not past a certain time that I would, I would put it in. So for sleeping, I mean, that was kind of, kind of my go-to. It puts your phone and do not disturb, you know, it kind of mutes all your notifications and then kind of gives you that window of sleep that you need instead of tying it to a clock. So. And then, um, I don't know, I would just learn this, um, last month in Malaysia, um, in the Apple Watch, you can set an alarm so that it wakes you up in a half hour window that you're sleeping lightly. So you can like for five hours and you could like do it so you won't wake up when you're like in a dead sleep at 3 p.m. Like, ah, so it'll wake you up when you're stirring. So it's a little less jarring and painful. That feels like the future. That's like a thing, that's real. Are we in Black Mirror? That, that's crazy. I wish. My big advice was gonna be like, don't look at your phone until your alarm goes off. Cause I do that to myself all the time. I'm like, I wonder how close it is to when I set my alarm. And then it'll be like two hours before I set my alarm. And then I'll just be laying in bed for two hours. Like, why did I look at my phone? Why did I do that? I'm a moron. So that's not like an app. <laughs> so just don't, don't do that. That's another good point though. Um, if you do have an issue where you're like, you can't, stay awake during your shift. I found setting 30 minute interval nap um, alarms was a really good way to like just refresh myself. I would say I gave myself two hours and every 30 minutes I would set an alarm, get up, check my emails. Cause I am on my shift. I actually am working. Um, and then I would go back to bed if there were no emails, if there were emails, I would get up, answer them and then go back to bed for that two hour time frame, and then stay awake the rest of the time. Um, but like I said, you listen to your body. If you need to sleep, just give yourself 30 minutes. It's really nice. Um, I've mastered 30 minute naps um, just for re-energizing. Just gonna hit the plus we coined, one. I don't think button. we, I don't think we coined it, but um, uh, somebody taught us about the espresso nap, which I learned about in Hanoi, which I really love. Which was if you just feel like you're just dead tired, drink an espresso and then go lay down for 20 and 30 minutes, and then the caffeine kicks in, and you're like, okay, well, cool. Now I've had this little refresher nap, and the caffeine just kicked in. So those saved my life. Except for that one time I didn't wake up and I slept through a client call. That wasn't good, but. Actually, the one thing that I say every night to Stacia, my friend slash remote your coworker, because she's working late night here too, I like don't know what I would do without my mate. So I don't know. I have like my thing that makes me feel like it's okay that I'm working so late. And for me, it's mate. And maybe for other people, it's something else. But like mate gives you like less of like a chaotic caffeine feeling high. It just gives me like a little more like, clean like I'm awake I'm alert um even you know if it's late and then I can still go to sleep like an hour after consuming it so it's like I don't know it's been a big big uh bonus one for me and it's like hard to find in certain places like maybe in Asia so I just travel I travel with Vietnamese coffee and mate everywhere I go these days find the things you like all right we don't have too much time we have like 10 minutes left so I would love to just actually kind of like make it a little bit open-ended for y'all to like just tell your favorite middle of the night night shift those war stories, as you put it earlier, Nicole, like what's like the funniest memory that like something you'll keep forever from the time that you had to work all night? Anybody can start. No pressure. Um, oh, fine. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Kim. 
We keep going. <laughs> I'm hey, going to ruin your life. <laughs> oh, I love you. Um, okay, so for me, um, again, with the, the DBA thing, um, I do get calls sometimes. Mission critical, server down. You have to figure it out. Um, so I was basically, I was like 20 minutes away from the workspace at one point. Uh, this is in Hanoi. And I basically had to duck into a place with like, it was quiet enough that I could tether to my phone and like log in to talk to a vendor. So I'm tethered to my phone in this bar. People are just like wasted around me. I'm shit faced. And basically I have to talk to this vendor, talk them off the ledge of like, the server's not going to die. We're not going to die. I haven't really at this point realized the time conversion. Like I think it's, you know, five or six in the morning where I am. I'm like slurring my speech and it's 4 p.m. back at home. So, you know, you can't predict these things, but at least it was a vendor, I guess. <laughs> Did you fix the server? Yeah, <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> um, a nice memory that I have on night shift is, um, I don't know if you guys know Gabby, but Hi. she's the um, experience manager from Peru. Okay. She became our PL halfway through this year. Oh, and she has like severe FOMO and down. she's just like the best person ever. So she decided in Japan, you know what? I'm gonna make my office hours the night shift. And then she like joined us all during the night shift, like a crazy person. And she would complain with us and have all this camaraderie. And we're like, Gabby, you can pick your hours, but she's crazy. So. <laughs> um, so she just like got nuts with us voluntarily. So that like really was an eye opener to like, oh, are we having fun on night shift? I'm confused. I mean, I guess we kind of were. <laughs> and then we also got drunk when the sun came up sometimes, and you know, when you're kind of drinking and the sun's going down and it makes a lot of sense, we would drink during sunrise and it would get really confusing. So those are kind of good memories. <laughs> Yeah, we were yeah. in Japan. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Um, so we were in Japan. We, I'll just just really quick. We went to go see the the bowing deer in Nara um, one morning. Uh, that we I think we left at like 5 a.m. Um, I was still working. I can work from my phone, thankfully. Um, but uh, we decided afterwards to go get sake. We were the first and only people in the sake bar at 8 a.m. Um, it was pretty fun. Um, and you do get a really nice buzz. You become a lightweight instantly once you get into Asian uh, working hours. So um, that's all for me. Claire, now's your time. <laughs> um, so there's a monthly drag show in Kyoto that is in a bar that is tucked away in a metro stop. So it's, or like a subway stop. It's like really random. And it's only once a month, and it's the last Friday of the month. So the city team usually doesn't tell um, remotes because they don't want them to get really drunk and then miss their flight. But I found out about it, <clears throat> and I went with someone else who worked the night shift. And we went after work at, like, I think the show was at, like, midnight or 1230. Um, and just saw, like, literally the most bizarre, like, it was like a drag show on acid. Um, I wasn't on acid, but that's what it felt like because the queens were just like really wild. Um, it was a really strange show, really, really fun. Um, and we were out until like four in the morning and then went home and packed and left Kyoto. So that was really neat. You made the flight though, everybody. Yes, I made the flight. I was like ready Perfect. to go. Yeah. I mean, I won't say that there wasn't a flight that I missed because of drinking that happened on the night shift. It wasn't a remote year flight, like a transition flight. I made all of those, but um, personal trip flights, I did miss one or two of those. Um, anyways, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's the, the thousand little things that, that made the night shift great. You know, like when in Thailand, we all said that we were like so hungry and we couldn't find anything to eat in the middle of the night. And Tan like took it upon himself to join us once a week to take us out for lunch in the middle of the night, you know, that kind of stuff was great, you know, or, you know, everybody knows being able to catch sunrise and all the times. Um, but I think my favorite night shift moment was um, when I had a client in Australia and I had a six, we were in the Thai islands actually on a side trip and I had a 6 a.m. call, but we had a 640 ferry to catch from uh, Koh Phangan to Koh Samui. And so I took the call tethered from my phone on the pier for the dock. 
uh, for the boat. So like I'm sitting there on the phone with my clients and my clients knew that I traveled. So, you know, kind of their favorite question when they got online was me. It's like, oh, where are you calling from today? And I was like, I'm literally on a dock in the Thai islands. And they were like, no way. And so I picked up my computer, like I showed them the boat and everything. And we did a 30 minute call and then we ran on to the, you know, to catch the, t the ferry 10 minutes later. So, I mean, I think that that kind of stuff, you know, it's the, the moments where you made the most of it. Um, that was kind of my favorite. Love it. So we're down to kind of like our last five minutes, two more prompts that I'd love y'all to chime in on. Um, the first one being, if somebody was like just joining the call now and basically if you had to give like one piece of advice, like one hard takeaway advice, like, this this is the thing that I most learned working the night shift all the all the nights I did what would kind of be like your takeaway advice that you'd want somebody to, to remember from this just knowing that you can um, do it I mean we all did I mean we all survived it we all did it um you know finding what works for you and knowing knowing that you can do it. I mean, I remember Kale was our last month on, on night shifts and we were all sitting in a workspace like, oh my God, it's like no more week, you know, like crazy, but like cheering each other on and just, I mean, knowing that you can do it. It's tough and it's hard, but it'll, it'll build some character in you. So you can, you can do it. I could, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, it feels so bad. It hurts like so much, but like it's going to end and you're going to remember it and you'll like remember the good stuff because it's not happening anymore. <laughs> or if you're Blair, you go back and do it again. So it never ends. I would say try and get, I'm actually writing up some tips in the panel. I wasn't sure if we were get to do this, but um, try and get other night shift roomies if you can. That way you're not worrying if you're waking someone up. They don't wake you up. Um, you always have an adventure buddy to go off early in the mornings to go see things. Um, and then you also have someone to walk home from the workspace with every day. Um, if you are in the, the um, guest house in Japan, that was the worst month of my life. I will not lie. That was so impossible. Um, but uh, for that, just try and make sure you, you have like a house meeting before to kind of set parameters and rules. Um, Cause that is something that will absolutely kill you if um, you just let it slide and you do get resentful. I'm sorry, Prea, I love you guys, but I also hated some of you <laughs> during that month. People got to sleep, man. You lose your mind. Well, I guess I'm from Perea, so I can chime in and agree. Sim and I would just like walk around downstairs, just like, I'm going to kill someone. Uh, but anyway, we did it and we got through it. So you won't have to commit murder to get through Asia. Best part about it. Um, I guess my biggest pro tip would uh, be sort of in line with Sim. Um, control your environment as much as you can. Um, like she said, get roommates who are working the same schedule. Um, also, you know, from a business owner perspective, I would say figure out how valuable your time is. Um, so in Kyoto, we were like a good 20 minutes from the workspace, even by bike sometimes. Um, that was kind of unacceptable to me during a really heavy production run. Um, I was working, you know, 20 hour days. So I ended up actually getting a, a hotel room in the same place as the workspace. Um, yeah, it cost me $30 a night, but it made me more money than it lost me. So if your environment isn't working for you, change it. You have that ability. Like how important is your work? How important is your career? Ask yourself these questions and make the right choices. Claire, you got anything for this? Final big advice to all the future night shifters. Um, like you get, a, I already talked about this a little bit, but you get to see like a side of the city that other people don't. And like, that's like, a really, it's kind of a, a gift in a way, even when it feels really annoying. And I think you get to see like a city, you get to see cities at like a viewpoint that most other people will never see in their whole life. So I think that's pretty magical. And like there's, it's magical in those little moments, like everyone shared in the panel. And I think those moments are little nuggets that you can share and remember for the rest of your life, even if you felt a little bit like sleep dazed um, throughout it. Love it. And this is kind of in tune with, with what you just said, Blair. But as my like little piece of advice, I guess I'd give because I've done some fair bits of night shift myself, is really just like make sure like the sacrifice your 
you're giving from working at the night isn't a total waste. So actually take advantage of your day. I feel like that's like the thing that if I've been, I've been jet lagged in the past, like I had wish I would have slept longer or something, but then I'll just lay in bed being like sad that I'm not sleeping, but I'm actually pretty good these days. But like, if my brain just wakes up at 8 a.m. after four and a half hours of sleep, I'll just be like, well, I'm awake now. So like, don't just lay in bed being bummed that I'm awake, like do something and maybe take a nap later. Cause those like lost hours when you're not like doing something worthwhile while traveling is I think what really makes you feel later in the day, like, man, this day was kind of a loss. So try to take advantage, I think of those mornings if, you're, if you have to work all night and uh, make the best of, you know, that new schedule that you might find yourself in. I would say the reverse of that too for Epics. I mean, if, if you're, if you think that you should be going to bed just because you're like, okay, I need to get sleep, but then you're just going to be laying in bed, staring at the ceiling. I mean, like if you're not tired, don't sleep, you know, go do something because there will be a point when you are tired and you will want to sleep. So listen to your body. All right. Last yeah. question. And I want everybody to answer it at once before we close the call down. So every come off mute. Last question is, would you choose to do the night shift again? Absolutely. Yes. 100%. <laughs> I'm not going to respond. It's actually funny because like, you guys are most like thick in it or like you just finished it. And yeah, so it's kind of like the more separation you have from it, you maybe think of it fondly looking back as like a memory from the way past or whatever. Yeah, yeah that was really interesting. Removed. I'm two years out. I'm a so. morning person. I'm a morning person. I like coffee in the morning. In Croatia, I had coffee this morning, and I was just like, <sighs> it just gives you a good appreciation, though, you know? Amazing. Well, man, you guys have been hilarious and insightful and the perfect little panel to come together for this. So thank you very much for taking your time to drop some knowledge for everybody. And, um, yeah, hopefully this gets watched by lots and lots of remotes in the future, people going on this night shift journey themselves. Um, and learn from you guys and the you know trials and tribulations of it all so thanks again y'all thanks for joining everybody else out there um we'll be back with another knowledge drop in a couple weeks thanks, thanks y'all bye, bye. 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 bye.